All right, crew, let's talk DOJ, FBI, because there's a lot of talk right now about what's going on there. There's a lot of excitement. And from what I can tell from where I'm standing and what I'm looking at, this is why, and one of the reasons why, I don't think the short squeeze is going to happen February, March, like a lot of people are thinking and hoping for. And I'm not saying that because this is FUD, because I'm a fucking shill. Like, I'm a fucking nobody on YouTube. Who the fuck would pay me to come on here and fucking talk? I've got, like, almost no subscribers. Come on, guys. Like, give your fucking head, give your fucking head a shake. I'm not saying this for that. I want this thing to short squeeze February, March just as bad as you. I want to be wrong so bad because I want to move on with my life. But I learned a lesson a long time ago, and that is to look at the look at the world as it is, not as you want it to be. So what I look at with this DOJ and this FBI stuff, here's why I don't think that this is, you know, it's exciting, it's, it's optimistic, it's good to see them actually doing their jobs. Here's why it's not gonna cause a short squeeze February and March. Now one, we need to look at what spurred all of this. Okay, now if I'm wrong about any of this, please let me know in the comments below, please. This is as I see it, I say it, as I understand it. And this is why I wanted to put this video out again, not FUD, but help me understand. Like if I'm seeing something wrong, please help me understand. Let's rise up together, guys. You know, don't be a fucking dickhead and just go down in the comments and be a hater. Actually help each other. Let's help each other understand and learn. So the investigations that are happening right now, these were subpoenaed like a year ago, a fucking year ago. So go back to where we were. What is it? February 18th today. So where were we February 18th, 2021? Well, all that GME shit was going down. The buy button taken away, all that. So that's number one. I think the subpoenas were issued as a result of looking into GME, not our play. Now, can they find things and discover things about our play as they do these investigations? Sure, because everybody's favorite fucking Melvin Capital those fucks, they're in there. They're on the list. They're they're being investigated. So maybe they'll find some AMC stuff. But AMC was kind of just getting started around that time. Shit, you know, with all the synthetics and all the the fuckery they did with basically cooking the books and synthetics, failures, all that shit didn't really start until about March-ish. So I don't think, um, you know, they might find stuff post-March, but... The mission, I think the mission is they're investigating the GME stuff. And then let's, well, let's talk about this as well. The other understanding I have about these investigations is they are looking into a practice that's called spoofing. Spoofing is essentially these short sellers and these, you know, research firms. A lot of them call themselves research firms. Spoofing is these firms putting out potentially fake and harmful information and reports and pieces on companies in the in the attempt of making and driving the price down so that they profit from their short position. That's what I understand they're investigating. They're mainly investigating spoofing. So again, like the timing of the subpoenas over a year ago. Well, AMC party wasn't really getting started yet, so and again, I'm not saying that they're not going to discover things or potentially discover things about our play, but these investigations that are going right now, I don't think they are about our play or from the events of our play. And that's another key thing to keep in mind too, guys, is look at the timeline, how long this stuff takes. These subpoenas were issued over a year ago or about a year ago. Um, there was more subpoenas issued at the end of 2021. And here we are, February, end of February almost, 2022, and they're just finally storming these buildings. Like, this shit does not happen overnight. It takes a long fucking time. So if it took this long just to get into the buildings and start seizing documents and investigating and combing through all of this stuff, how long do you think it's going to take to comb through all of this stuff? Gosh, that could take another, fuck, year or years even. Excuse me. So, again, that's that's you know why I'm a little skeptical. All these people that are so optimistic about the squeeze happening February, March. Fuck, I want you to be right. I want to be wrong so bad. I just again, we got to look at things as they are, not as we want them to see. And you know, in another video, 
uh, probably link it right here actually, uh, just uploaded, talking about those things, right? Um, you know, your mind, your mind and your emotions as, a, as an investor, as an investor in this play and post this play, you know, that's one of the few and only things we can actually control as investors. And in fact, it's the most important thing we can control as an investor is our emotions and our mind and our actions. So if you're not studying behavioral economics, you know, things like confirmation bias, hot hand fallacy, loss aversion, these are all very important ideas that you need to understand. Confirmation bias being one of the biggest ones, right? We all love to seek out information that supports our confirmation, hence the confirmation bias, right? We all love to watch videos and read articles that support what we believe in. We don't like to... Um, we don't like to see information that goes against our beliefs. Now, that's another one you should learn. Cognitive, cognitive dissonance. You know, the mind gets a little rattled when it sees something that is questions its belief and its core. So, guys, like, I'm fucking, uh, this probably doesn't seem like it, but I'm spitting absolute gold here. Like, confirmation bias, hot hand fallacy, loss aversion, cognitive dissonance. These are all terms that you should be familiar with you should understand and understand about yourself because a lot of it's happening right now so that's where i'm i'm at with the doj i think they're looking into things that were pre our play i think they're looking into a practice um, from what i understand anyways they're mostly looking into a practice called spoofing which spoofing is a whole different thing right like our play we're looking into more things like naked shorting ladder attacks fucking failure delivers, synthetic shares, all that kind of shit, spoofing, like putting out articles that, you know, we know that, like fucking look at Motley Fool, those fucks put out spoofs all the time on uh, on our play, Entrepreneur, fuck, those guys, same thing, Entrepreneur.com, they love putting out articles that, oh, such a bad investment, this is a terrible investment, AMC is the worst investment ever, like, whatever, spoofing, spoofing, I think we need to look into the bigger issues here, which is the naked shorts, the failure to delivers, the synthetic shares, that's way more important. So I don't think these investigations as excited as we're getting about them. I don't know. I don't think it's as important as we think. And you guys might not like that. But anyways, actually uh, talking. So one of the other short sellers, one of the bigger ones on the block, uh, speaking of block, pun intended, Mr. Carson Block, Muddy Waters. Um, funny story, a little side story. You can click off this video now if you want. We're, we're done talking about the main topic. Um, Carson Block. Money Waters, um, and I know a lot of short sellers get, you know, bad reputation and they're the evil, we hate them and all that kind of thing, but that guy actually saved me a lot of money, <laughs> believe it or not. So he um, he exposed a company called Sino Forest, a Chinese timber company. I think it was back in, uh, I think it was 2005, six, seven, maybe in around that time. Maybe, yeah, it was. I think it was before 2010. Anyways, this guy put out a, you know, like they do, he put out a, a research paper on this company called Sinophoros, how they were just basically a total fraud, kind of like an Enron, right? They just completely cooked the books, way, 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 way overstated their assets. They basically had no assets um, and fucked over a bunch of investors. Like that stock, I think it even ran up to like 20 bucks or something. But anyways, um, I bought it quite low. I bought it, I think around two, three-ish bucks. It was hovering around 18. I wish I would have sold there, obviously. But then, boom, Carson's uh, paper came out. And this shit, like, obviously shit hit the fan. Stock fucking tanked right away. Uh, I ended up selling at around 8 or $9. So still pretty good gains. And the motherfucker ended up being right. He was absolutely right about everything he said. The company went to fucking zero. <laughs> zero. Like, it was, it was a total sham. The company was a total fucking fraud. Some people lost money, of course. Um, luckily though, thanks to him, I, you know, I read his report and I was like, shit, this, this doesn't sound good. And I fucking sold and I closed out my long, I was a long position on it. I, I closed it out and I didn't, I still made money. I didn't lose much. Anyways, we're rambling now. See you guys in the next video. Peace.